Okay, so Leonard here from Accents Color and Hair Salon, and this is Ashley. Um, she's been my client for, God, we've been doing her hair for what, a year and a half, two years now? Mm -hmm. And we've done how many Japanese straightenings now? About like four or five, five, six? Fifth? Fifth? Okay. And so what I wanted to talk about was the difference in maintenance for not just maintenance, but also, also technique. Now, there's two parts of the Japanese straightening, equally important. Uh, the technique that you use on that particular type of hair, and I do every curl type that you can think of and every ethnicity, okay? But when it comes to hair that is like 4A, B, and C, which is really tight and coily, the technique for doing the Japanese straightening is different because that type of hair is more delicate, more fragile, okay? So I have to be really, really careful with it. But equally important is the maintenance. When Ashley goes home, she's got a whole maintenance program that she actually has come up with herself because she knows how delicate her hair is. So when she started telling me how she maintains her hair at home, the products and the procedures, the things that she does to detangle it, de-shed it, condition it, products that she uses, I was like, oh my God, this is like a revelation that everybody needs to hear because the home maintenance is where you get a lot of your damage if you're not careful. So <clears throat> because of tangling from shedding, and this is something that Ashley actually pointed out that I wasn't aware of and she's gonna be talking about. But basically I've adjusted the technique for Japanese straightening for the different curl types. And Ashley is the first person who's really, really gone into it and is ultra, ultra careful with her hair. And she does all the maintenance properly. And she's come up with some of the systems that I feel like are really important for other people to hear about because they really help to alleviate any kind of breakage. And you're gonna be getting a lot of breakage if you're not careful, especially with, you know, 4ABC type hair. So, uh, Ashley, just tell us real briefly your observations about your hair since you've had the Japanese straightening and what you find really, really works for you. Um, since I've had the Japanese uh, straightening, I literally, maintenance on the hair is like very easy. Um, I only wash my hair once a week and I do a deep condition every time that I wash my hair. Um, I use all the products from Leonard, which I love. They're amazing. They're super good for your hair. Like I can even tell you the booster deep conditioners revitalizes my hair. My, feel, my hair feels very moisturized and strong and it really helps. All of the products in the line really help with like detangling, getting my scalp clean, um, I would definitely say the biggest thing is once you hit, because I get my hair done every four months, once you hit the middle of month three and you got two textures in your hair, be very delicate. I don't brush my hair. I don't put heat in my hair at all. Only when I get my Japanese straightener done. So this is air dried, um, just put into two flat twists going back look like little warrior braid, like twists, they're super cute. I let them air dry and I get big curly waves. And when I go to sleep, I just literally put my hair up like that. And then I put a little scarf on and then I bring it down and it's like perfect, it's awesome. So <laughs> Ashley's hair, when we do her Japanese straightening, we don't make it pin straight because it's way too much stress on the hair. It makes it way too, makes it more fragile than it already is. So you can see her hair. Now she's got wave in it. She forgot we were gonna do a video today, but that's okay. <clears throat> but her hair, when she styles it at home, she just does the, uh, the braids, right? That's it. That, that's, how she bra that's how she styles it. She does not use a round brush or a flat iron because that's gonna cause more damage, okay? And breakage. And she literally, literally get no breakage. Right? It's just shedding. It's just shedding. Like I would, I mean, no one in the world could prevent <clears throat> breakage. So I would say I get 1%, just like a normal very person. Very little, very little. <laughs> but here's the thing. Most of my clients who 
who get Japanese training who have 4A, B, or C uh, type hair, they usually get breakage, and this is what happens. Usually it's because of one of several things. The number one thing is they use heat on their hair. They use a flat iron, especially as the roots are starting to grow out, and they're like, oh my God, I gotta get my roots done, but you know, I need to flatten them out so they look, you know, they look good, they blend in, and they use way too much heat. Uh, because that hair is very resistant, the uh, regrowth hair, the virgin hair. Um, and the difference between the strength of that hair and the hair that's been Japanese straightened, and then you've got that transition spot where they meet, where it's grown out, the heat is way too great, that area is way too delicate to begin with, and it causes breakage. The other thing is they wait too long for a Japanese straightening. Ashley gets her done, her, her hair retouched about every four months, right? Isn't that what we got to into? the dots, four and, months. And if you go past that, you're gonna end up getting way too much uh, tangles and knotting in the root area. And that's where Ashley was talking about shedding. You get shedding, it gets caught in there, and then it becomes a struggle of trying to get the tangles out, and you end up stressing the hair out and getting breakage. So that's a really important um, point. If you're gonna get a Japanese straightening and you do have tight curl, you have to get it done maintenance sooner. I recommend four months or less. If you start going past that, you're gonna end up getting more tangles and breakage. Okay, anything else you wanna add on that? I would add that once your roots start growing out, instead of using heat, water is your friend you can manipulate your natural hair with water and your hair that's straightened still responds so well even before the uh, japanese straightening process so so use water to help you take the shedded hair out you when you're taking your shower use the water and conditioner to glide all of that extra shedded hair out of your head because if you brush you're literally kind of ripping through, whereas the water is gonna loosen it and you'll be able to just slip it right out. Yeah, you're gonna be tearing out the hair basically because it's gonna be tangled. Uh, one another thing that uh, Ashley touched on was product. Product is so important because your hair is lacking moisture to begin with, okay? So you need moisture and you already know that. Well, when you do, when you do a chemical service like a Japanese straightening now, you're also uh, compromising the strength of the hair too, because you're breaking it down. <clears throat> so products are your friend. Products that I recommend, you know, Ashley uses them, they're great. But there are other products out there too that, you know, that are gonna work really, really well. You just have to find them. And, you know, what works for you could be something that I'm not totally, well, you know, actually you use a couple of products that, that I'm not really familiar with and they work, you know? I'm, my point is use product because they really, really make your, uh, make your hair that much healthier, especially oils, deep conditioning treatments. Um, what else do you use on your hair besides those? Water, detangler. oil detangler, deep mm. conditioner, and the shampoo. Shampoo and conditioner is really important. Yeah. I used to think, oh, that's not that big of a deal, your shampoo and conditioner, but it really does make a difference because you want a really good moisturizing shampoo because it acts as a, um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? <laughs> it helps you detangle before you even get to the conditioning stage. As a foundation for the rest of your products, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, so you do want to use a really good moisturizing uh, shampoo and conditioner. It makes a difference. Um, we're going to be doing a touch up on Ashley today. You can see that maybe not. I mean, she's got, yeah, she can. You got like four, I didn't say four B, four A, right? I have like four A curls. Four A, yeah, four A curls. And you can see the texture in her hair here. You know, um, she's, it's not perfectly straight, but what it is, is manageable. It's deep frizzed and uh, has lots of shining to get done. And she can do a lot with her hair. Okay, so we were just, just talking after we finished that video and, and just wanted to add a couple other things. When you are shampooing your hair, it's very important that you don't tangle it up, okay? So Ashley's gonna share with you how she washes her hair. 
So. All right, so I just have a middle part, which this is honestly, after a couple months, it's my staple. I don't disrupt my part, uh, but I will part it all the way down into two sections and I let the water, I mean, all one direction. And I'm, I go in there and I just, with the, t the pads of my finger and a shampoo, and then I rinse all the way to the back in one direction. That's how I'm able to get all of the shredded hair out of my head without even using a brush. I'm always having the water manipulate my hair and I always go in one direction. So I make sure that the entirety of the section is going one direction and I'm just getting all the shredded hair out under the water while I'm rinsing. And then I do the other side. Then I put my hair to the back, I put it up into a clip, and I'm done. Back to the shedding. The shedding is where it's going to get stuck in the root area as it grows out, because it's really tight, really knotted. So the longer you go before you get your Japanese straightening, the more problems you're gonna have with the shedding. And that's what causes a lot of problems. Um, the other thing that we didn't touch on is deep conditioning treatments. When I do a Japanese straightening, I do a deep conditioning treatment on all of my clients. I feel like it really sets the hair up well for maintenance in the future because you, you know, you're putting that moisture in the hair right away rather than using just your everydays. Uh, it, it creates a good foundation. So that's another thing that we do. And then Ashley, she, well, all my clients get a booster where they can maintain their condition treatments weekly. So. That's really important. What do you think about the, the boosters? I think that they're vital. I actually just ran out of mine. I usually have a lot. I just ran out and I'm back, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're vital. My hair is, the manageability of my hair using the boosters after my deep conditioning treatment, mm -hmm. it just makes life so much easier. Right. It, I, I do have other products that I use, but the quality of the products I can feel in my hair when I use the boosters compared to, and I'm talking about these products, before I even got the Japanese hair straightener, that's what I was using to grow out my hair. You right. know, my natural hair likes that product, but the new products that I use with you that you recommend, both textures like those products as well. My natural hair likes those products and the Japanese hair straightener. The product line that she's talking about is Milbon. Milbon is like the number one professional hair care line in Japan. I use their Japanese straightening system, which is called Lysio. But their, their, their shampoos, their conditioners, their, and they've got a unbelievable insulin treatment. Um, that's what we use on my Japanese straight and what we use on, on, on Ashley. Uh, but their oils, their, uh, just their whole line is just really, really luxurious. I mean, they're really rich, really conditioning, and it actually helps to heal the hair, believe it or not. If you're if you have condition or if you have hair that is chemically treated, it is almost it is a must. It really really helps a lot, and it'll actually help your hair become better conditioned. So that's it for that. But it, that is no one that we're talking about. And then what do you 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 use other uh, product lines mm -hmm. like? Shea or what? So I was using Shea Moisture's Deep Conditioner and Aussie Moist. Now Aussie Moist, the four minute miracle one, that for me is because I love my nail bone product so much, it's my filler. Okay. It helps me to, if I really need to get in there and just get the shedded hair out, 
that's what I'll use instead of my good stuff because I mm. want that to last longer. Um, but yeah, on a weekly basis, I go through it I, as a routine. Yeah. And sometimes I alternate so I can keep my good stuff. <laughs> okay, keep my mail on. Now, <laughs> speaking of good stuff, there's a lot of good lines out there. It just so happens that that's the one that I use and I promote. And so Ashley, like, it's a good product. But there are other good products out there. You can, if you can find something that you really like, use it. That's the important part, is just use good products on your hair. Okay, that's about it for right now. Yeah.